All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're going to be going over how to connect your Windows PC to your Synology NAS using File Explorer. This is so much easier than trying to go through DSM and downloading every single file that you need to use to your computer then re-uploading it. And that's actually a workflow that a lot of people don't realize is really the benefit of having a NAS is it's supposed to be able to integrate perfectly with all of your other drives. It should be almost indistinguishable from a drive that you've plugged into your computer other than the fact that it should be able to be accessed anywhere on the network by any computer simultaneously. And really that's the advantage of any NAS. And so today I'm going to be going over how to set up your Windows PC to just automatically connect to this share, which is called an SMB share on your Synology NAS. This will let you basically open up all of your files just like it's that external hard drive plugged in and it will be really easy to use and it will really start making your NAS a lot more useful. All right, and so it's incredibly easy to set this up. The first thing you want to do is basically log into DSM and we're going to go into control panel. Now control panel, from there we're going to go into file services. And here we're going to see the different options. There's SMB, AFP, NFS, FTP, RSync, and some other ones. The one we're going to want to use is called SMB. And I would recommend this on both Windows, Mac, and honestly Linux systems. It's just the easiest thing to use and it's compatible with everything else. If you're living in a Linux only environment, NFS is pretty good, though it does take some getting used to with who has authorization to what. It's not nearly as simple as SMB authorization. And if you're on a Mac, AFP is no longer being supported by Apple, so I would really just go for SMB. And so from there, just make sure that this is enabled right here. Then we're gonna look down here and we're gonna see that from a PC, all you need to do is type in slash slash testbed. Testbed for me is my DS1621 Plus's host name. And so that's what we're gonna be using. This way you don't have to try to remember an IP address or anything like that. It is basically an identifier that your Synology broadcasts to the router and says, hey, if anybody's looking for testbed, I am testbed and this will be whatever server you named your Synology. And so from there, we are basically set up. We now can just go into File Explorer, go ahead and open it up, and we're going to right click on this PC, Map Network Drive. You're going to choose a drive letter, basically just don't make it a drive letter that's already in use, and you can also go into like WW or anything else. But we're just going to select W, and for folder, we're going to type backslash backslash testbed. And this is obviously whatever server name you've got. And so we're just going to go ahead and type that in. And then we're going to say what share we want to connect to. And this is just whatever you've named your shared folder. You can actually leave this off and I'll just ask you. But we're going to choose the folder. And so to figure that out, we're going to go in shared folder. We're going to see that there's one volume, one shared folder. It's 1621. And so we're just going to use that. So we're going to say slash. 1621 and whatever your name is. We're definitely going to want to say reconnect at sign in. It makes your life so much easier. And then if you've not set this up, I just click this, say connect using different credentials. And that way it's going to ask us our login information next. And so from there, we just hit finish. And so just like that, it'll probably ask you for your username and password. I've already set this up once on here, so it's already remembered that. But if you want to use a different account, you can select that here. But uh, but now just type in your username and password. And remember, don't have this be the admin username and password. I've explained this all in another video that I'll link below. It's basically how to secure your NAS and make sure that if you do have a single computer on your network, start cryptoing the network shares that you'll be able to recover from it. And so it's called how to protect yourself from a crypto attack. And I'll leave that in the description below. But now we're just going to type in the password and you're going to want to say, remember my credentials and just click. Okay. And just like that, we are now connected. If we go into this PC, we're going to see it's just showed up right here and we've got full access to all the files on there. You can just open up, see everything that's in there. It's incredibly useful. It goes really well and it's so fast and so much easier than trying to download the files through DSM. No, this will not work if you're outside of your house. So if you do want to have this kind of access, you're going to want to set up what's called a VPN server, but don't just open up the SMB ports on your router. That is incredibly insecure and is an easy way to get all your data compromised or worse stolen. And so now we can just test it out. We can basically just go grab a file and drag it to our desktop. And I'm on a 10 gig card, as you can see. So I'm getting 1.05 gigabytes of transfer per second. It is so fast. 
you probably have a one gig connection. So you should be seeing about 120 megabytes per second, which is still pretty fast. But yeah, you can open things up and edit them and it's so nice to have. The one thing to note, some things actually do not support being on a network share. And so things like Lightroom catalogs, you actually cannot put the actual catalog on a network share due to performance issues and locking issues, I believe. And so if you want to do that, I've got a video on that that basically covers how to use a Lightroom catalog with a Synology NAS and you essentially sync it locally using Synology Drive and so that multiple users connect. Then for your massive raw file library, you basically have that on the SMB share just like this and you can connect to it. That way you don't have to store all the files on your local hard drive, just the catalog which stores basically the changes and edits you've done. And so that's all there is to it. Now, every time we log off and log back on, it'll automatically connect if we're on our local network. If not, it'll just basically say, hey, I can't connect to it. And then next time you're home, you can basically just go click on it, right click and click connect if it was there. And so it's just that easy and it works really well. I know this was a fast one, but that's really all you need to do. You can now have multiple people all map the same shared drive and all being able to use it at the same time for whatever purposes you've got. All right, well, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Go ahead and leave any of the tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.